Hi Pisces, welcome to your February 2018 love reading. It's Rena here. As you can see, I've laid out the cards. You're the second sign that I've done and the second time that I've started over again. Coming off of a, a, a flu, um, monster flu, and um, just, um, you know, it's hard to, it's still a little bit hard to get back up to speed. And just like the first time, I was kind of like, I don't know if I was just out of uh, practice that I was like, uh, you know, at a standstill as I started the reading and I couldn't think, well, what should I say, you know? But um, I've thought about what could be going on here after I started over again. Okay, so let's start with the heart of the matter. Uh, actually, the, the top three cards are really good for love. The Two of Cups is the heart of the matter, and this is a card of commitment uh, to someone. This is a card of loving someone and being in a couple. Sometimes it's reuniting with somebody that you used to have a relationship with. But here's the thing, and I was like, that's where I kind of got confused because of this card. All three of these cards are about love and marriage. The past position we have the four of wands, this is a happy home, new home, uh, maybe getting married uh, to somebody. What I did is I looked at the higher message and what was crossing you. And I think that some of you may be loving again after a divorce or after a death of a spouse or, or somebody that you loved very dearly. And that is something that gives you a whole new lease on life. Because um, with the Four of Wands in the past position, I think that's what threw me for a loop. I was like, well, if the Four of Wands is in the past position, how can these other cards be so good too? I didn't see like what the storyline could be. And the thing is also that um, we have here the card of like this uh, falling in love phase. It's very, you know, the Sun card, one of the most positive cards in the Major Arcana, if not the most positive card. And in astrology, the Sun rules the fifth house of romance, of that first stage of when you fall in love with someone. So all of these cards are consistent at the top. But here's where it gets a little bit interesting and where I started to see what might be happening. We have here the Three of Swords. Now, for some people, if you were divorced and you have found love again, the Three of Swords could be as a spiritual message underlying feelings or residue of feelings that connect with uh, that rejection from that person. If let's say you had to get divorced because your partner was a, what would you call it? Like a um, complete, I was going to think of that word serial cheater. Um, and you had to, to leave the relationship because of that. Just because you leave the relationship doesn't mean it just goes away. And you may have fallen in love with somebody else, but it still bothers you. Okay? And if you, if you lost your partner to death and you have found love again, you may be happy, you may be in bliss, but there's still a part of you that is, is grieving. That's obviously normal. Now... The other scenario in that top row is that you got married and you have a happy marriage, but you got uh, you hooked up with an old flame and you're really in love with that person. And now you feel this, this is a card of, um, you know, a three parties involved. So like a love triangle. Okay. And... You may feel terrible because you, the person that you're with right now that you're married to is a good person. 
but you realize that you actually love this other person. And so this is the other card that helped me with this because this is the challenge position. The chariot card, now this actually connects to cancer, so if there's a cancer person that is problematic in your life, that could be why this is coming up, that they're not good for you. But the, the chariot in reverse is like your life out of control. And this could be because for some Pisces, they're never happy. And I'm, I think that there's uh, some truth to that because Pisces is ruled by Neptune. You're ruled by Neptune. And Neptune is a, a planet that rules illusion and delusion and the spiritual realms. And so it is very, it's very idealistic. And Pisces people tend to look for perfection. You know, your opposite sign is Virgo. And Virgos are the ones that are known as the perfectionists. But they're perfectionists in terms of their behaviors and things of this world. You are trying to be a perfectionist when it comes to intangible things like love and um, maybe your spiritual life. You want the perfect spiritual consciousness or what have you. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so there may be this restless quality where you're looking for uh, the, your soulmate, so to speak, but nobody ever like really um, lives up to that, fills that bill. And that, that can be dangerous because if you, if you cannot um, accept that you are um, in charge of your own happiness, you may always look for it in the outer world. And you're dependent on external circumstances. So, and also you could throw away a very good relationship for a dream, for something that really doesn't exist. Now, there may be some people out there where this is simply that you got married to someone and realized after the fact that you made a mistake. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. The problem becomes when you just start cheating and what you do is you may think that you're protecting your partner because you're not leaving them. But then not only are you cheating on them, which isn't very respectful to them, but you're also not allowing them to find the person that is going to want to be with them. So if that is going on, consider like really getting clear with yourself what's going on and if you realize you have to leave this relationship then do so because you don't want to uh, be with somebody under false pretenses when you really don't love them and regardless of if this new love works out the advice or what's coming in is the Ten of Wands. Uh, this is twofold. You may be working long hours and all of the things are going to be uh, kind of put on, the sh on a shelf because you don't have time to deal with them and you're going to just prolong the situation because you have to uh, do something maybe either with your career or with some family issue and you are kind of preoccupied with that right now. But the advice could be, I would say, is look at this, look at if you're involved in a relationship with two parties and, and if you're not happy in your relationship, ask yourself this, are you the one that is always doing the heavy lifting, because I always see that card as the heavy lifting. 
and the person who is trying to make something work. And that tells you something. Um, if you have reunited with somebody and it turns out that it's more trouble than it's worth, then you know that you made a, a wrong uh, choice. And hopefully that won't happen to many of you because, you know, the cards on the top are very positive. And it looks that you have love somewhere in your life romantically. But whether or not you really appreciate it is another story. So hopefully you do. But if there's a struggle involved, then that should tell you that something is not in alignment with what you're looking for. And the outcome is the page of wands. And this could be like the start of something big. And you know, I didn't even look at it from astrological terms. It could be that you were with a fire sign and like, a, I would say especially a Leo because uh, the sun relates to Leo. That's who you're going to end up with. The other fire signs are Aries and Sagittarius. The Page of Wands is also a card of good news coming in or the start of a passionate relationship. So the Page of Wands is a card of positive new beginnings in whatever way. Sometimes this could be you hear something, uh, you read an email that just makes your heart sing, or you are uh, starting something up with a person who may have like fire in their chart, not necessarily sun sign, but they have that enthusiastic kind of personal personality that's very uh, bubbly and, and they get you to be very active and, about life and kind of uh, um, take, take a lot of interest in things. And the two of you are like um, a very positive force, you know, for good in the world. So hopefully that this resonated with some of you. If you'd like a private reading, you can click on the link below. I want to wish those Pisces who are born in February a happy birthday, solar return. And for all of you, have a great February. Take care. Bye.